Today we are talking about tracking and spying people online. But don't worry, not in a creepy way, we're just tracking the users to see how they interact with our digital product. And if all of this sounds strange and creepy to you, unfortunately I have to give you some bad news. As most websites, except institutions and financial services, use these tools to learn how their users interact with their digital products. The reason why this is possible and legal is because these softwares do not track any personal data like name, email, or anything that can link to you as a person. For them, you're just a number, but they can see how you interact with their digital product so they can track the user behavior. And we as product designers use this data to enhance the user experience. Or if we work for a very greedy company, then basically we're forced to use this data to kind of like push people to spend more than they can actually afford or buy stuff that they don't need. And yes, that really happens. And we're going to get into that into a later video when we're gonna talk about the dark UX side of things. As you can see, being a product designer is kind of like a big responsibility because you can do good stuff and also bad stuff, depending on how you want to use this data and how you interpret it. The thing is that as a product designer, knowing how to implement and how to interpret this data it's essential. But how do you know which softwares to use? And most importantly, are there any free ones that will not break your bank? See, for almost 90% of my digital products, I've been using Hotjar, which is a very good and reliable software. It allows me to generate heat maps, track clicks, record user sessions, and just gather very valuable data on how users interact with my digital product. And all of this helping me create better designs and providing a better user experience for the users that are using my digital product. But the issue with Hotjar lately is that some of the features that were previously free now you have to pay for it and it kind of sucks because if we look here at their website we will see that the basic version only allows us to kind of like record 35 daily sessions which is not a lot to be honest so if you need to record 100 daily sessions you will need to pay around 32 euros a month which is a lot if you think about it just for one software that records how your users interact with your digital products. But I understand their business decision and it makes complete sense from a financial point of view. I started to look for an alternative for Hotjar as I've started to work on <coughs> shameless plug on a design course that's going to be available on <coughs> uh, UX Lab Academy soon. And what I've realized is that I cannot recommend Hotjar to kind of like my students because if they want to track and learn how to use this data to interpret it, they're not gonna have enough data because they're gonna have only 35 daily sessions. So that's not gonna be enough. And this kind of like put me on this path to find an alternative for Hotjar and find basically a software that you can use for free. And this is when I stumbled upon Microsoft Clarity. Let me get this out of the way. I'm not a huge fan of Microsoft in general, especially because of their reputation back in the days on their reliability with their products. So you can imagine that when I found out about Microsoft Clarity, I was a bit reluctant about if I should try this or not. But after implementing it on a couple of my projects, I have to say that this is a very good and reliable tool. The data is accurate and the integration with Google Analytics and Tag Managers, it's actually very easy to do, which for someone that is just starting out is very helpful. But enough with the chit chat, let's jump over to the computer and see how you can integrate this with your digital products and how you can start tracking your users' behavior. So to get started, just head over to clarity.microsoft.com, head over here to the sign up page. And my advice is that if you have a Google Analytics account that you already set up, just use the same email. So this way you just keep everything under one email. So you keep your Google Analytics, you keep your Clarity and your Tag Manager under the same account, which will be a lot easier to manage. So for my example, let's head over here to sign up with Google and I will select my personal account to create a new account with Microsoft Clarity. After I do this, I'll be prompted with this pop-up where I need to accept obviously some uh, terms and conditions and some privacy policies, which I don't read, but probably I should, but I just head over to continue. And then here is where they prompt me to uh, select the website that I'm planning to track. So for example, for this example, let's set up this for my personal uh, portfolio. So I'll set this up, to, I will name this Dennis 
and I will just grab the link quickly from my portfolio and I will add that here. Once I add that, I will add it as a new project and now I need to install this script so it can start tracking on my website. So let's grab the tracking code. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna copy this from here and then I'm gonna head over to my Webflow account under the custom code and I'm gonna paste this script somewhere here. I'm just gonna grab a comment as well so I can uh, name this so I will know exactly what uh, this code is about. And I'm gonna change this to Microsoft Clarity, save it, and I'll publish this on my website. And that's it. That's how simple it is to actually set up Microsoft Clarity and start gathering data. It's like literally, these are the only steps you need to do. So now if we go back to uh, our account, let's get back to get started and let me refresh the page. And already you'll see that I have two recordings that are taking place now, so they're live. And also the dashboard is fully active. So basically this is the only step that you need to do to start gathering data. Now if you want to integrate Google Analytics and Tag Manager, you'll need to head over either here to get started where you're gonna have kind of like all these steps. So for example, here you will see that you are prompted to uh, integrate with Google Analytics. You just click on that, get started. You just select the account, super simple, select all, continue, and this will automatically integrate it with your Microsoft Clarity. From here, you can actually select which one, which of your websites, Google Analytics, you would like to link to this particular project. So you click on, for example, dennis.com, save it, and you just click on uh, finish setup, click it once again, save it, and that's it. That's pretty much how you set up Google Analytics with Microsoft Clarity, super simple. Again, if you want to uh, integrate with uh, Tag Manager, is pretty much the same step. But an important step that I want you to do is to go here to IP blocking, click on it, and here add your own IP address. You can either add it manually or you can actually select block my current IP address, give it a name, for example, this is home, and then you add and that's it. And this way you will make sure that when you interact with your digital product or your website, you're not interfering with the data that you're gathering from other users. And this is super helpful and it's super simple to set up. So personally, I will recommend you to do this as soon as possible. Now, let me show you an example where I've implemented this for a couple of days and I have a bit of data so you can see how it looks. So if I change the account, I will just log in with uh, another account of mine, same thing. I'm gonna log in, you're gonna see here the project. Once I click on it, you'll see the data that I gathered so far. So here you're gonna be able to see dead clicks, range clicks, uh, rage clicks, which it's not, uh, the scroll depth, the scroll depth and total sessions. So you're gonna have a huge amount of data that you can actually look through and figure out how your users behave on your website. And most importantly, you're gonna have all these recordings. And as you can see, I have 172 recordings that I can have a look at and see if I can spot anything interesting that my users are doing while they're using uh, this website. So if you click on a recording, for example, I've here I'm gonna be able to see the entire session and I'm gonna be able to see how the user interacted with uh, my website. If I see anything interesting, then probably that will give me some ideas on how I can change the design to optimize it depending on my KPI. Also here you can see the clicks. So if you click here on the clicks, you'll see that for example, here on the logo, only one click. Here on join waitlist, there are six clicks. So you'll see exactly where people click more often. And also you have the area, which shows you a percentage of likelihood where people actually click. 
And if you're interested to see if people are scrolling all the way through your page, then you have the scrolling section where you will see basically the percentage of users that arrive at a certain point. So for example, we will see that at the bottom, we have like around 25% of users that actually reach this point from the top. And with this being said, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, leave them down in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm gonna see you pretty soon in the next video. Bye.